Great. Hello, Happy New Year, everyone. Happy, happy January 11th. Never before has there ever been, nor will there ever be a day quite like this one. My name is Missy Shipman, and I'm delighted to be partnering with the Baldensville Public Library once again um, this month to bring you a card making class. And I am excited to share with you a fun calendar project that has uh, some paper engineering. We'll be making a box fold card and to, to show off our calendar. You can go ahead and mark your dates for our Zoom sessions at the library or our in-person classes on Friday mornings, and uh, you'll have your calendar ready to remind you throughout the year. This also would make a super great gift for someone because it's really easy for them to display on their desk or on their nightstand. We have two other projects tonight as well. And I just want to give a big thank you again to Julia. She's the tech support and emotional support for me as well as we partner to put together these classes each month. Um, Julia uh, puts together the, the uh, stamps and ink for you that you can borrow when you pick up your kit. Um, we do ask for that $5 voluntary donation, which helps me to include lots of goodies in the kit each month. So your purple bag for January has... Um, just two envelopes inside, but it actually will be three projects. So one will be the green calendar project. We're gonna do that one last. You can set that aside. And then the, um, the other envelope has materials for both of our two cards. Welcome those of you who are just joining us and those of you who are watching us on replay, welcome. And please know that you can reach out to me or to Julia when you have questions or, or requests or comments that you'd like to share with us. We enjoy the feedback to make this program even better. So inside the one envelope that has the um, Orchid Oasis coloring and these beautiful floral images, we're gonna very carefully take out all the pieces because there's a bunch, okay? And you can tap it out. There's gonna be some string inside, uh, some gray baker's twine, some, um, it's either going to be a yellow a pink or a blue little card box piece. So if you don't see your, if it's not pink, don't worry, it might be yellow or it might be blue. Or it might be a little uh, but green leaf. <laughs> there might be little stray leaves and flowers, that's right, or stars or cupcakes. So, but the what we'll do is um, just set aside this Orchid Oasis piece. It has the card base, um, some gorgeous glimmer paper, a snowflake, these pieces that hopefully stayed pretty well inside your, your card base, set those aside. We'll do that project second. All right, but we're gonna begin with this cute little box. And uh, it's a perfect size to put a, a gift card in or a little um, tea bag or some candies inside. Sometimes we want to give a little gift and uh, we just want to dress it up to make it extra special. So I'll show you the construction. It's already pre-scored for you, uh, but it needs um, a little bit of adhesive. And I'll show you how we'll do that for the wrap. The box itself does not need any adhesive, which is kind of cool. Now you can decide if which color you want your box to be. Your piece, what if you have the blue or the yellow or the green, both have a different color on the other side. So you have options. And the the piece the wraps are designed to coordinate with either side. So you can pick what might give you pleasure. So I have like peach and green. Does that sound right? Yes. Yep. It's kind of a peachy pink color. Yeah. And then so you also have a wrap that has polka dots or little floral pieces. Excellent. Okay. If you have the blue one, then your kit looks more like um, cupcakes and sprinkles. Okay, we'll put together that one too so you can see the box um, construction twice. We'll take our box and it's already pre-scored here. So we're gonna fold in. You can see you've got the box top. It's all one piece connected to the bottom piece. How do you know which way's in? Do uh, so you fold toward the dimple? Yes, so you're gonna hide that, dim hide that pimple. That part that's bumping up is folding in. But in this case, if you wanted your your box to be green, you can still fold it the other way. This paper is pretty malleable. It's it's um, it's flexible enough that you can decide which color you want it to be. In this case, I'm going to make it the pink. So I'm folding, I'm folding all those pieces in to get them comfortable. 
you'll see these thin, four thin little flaps. Those are gonna fold in to make the bottom of the box. Okay, so this, this part that doesn't have any flaps on it, that's the top that doesn't have any um, thin little flaps. So we'll take the two, at one end at a time, we'll take two flaps and fold them in, and we're gonna hide them by wrapping the end over and tucking it in. Okay, so I'll do that again over here. We're gonna take those two little kind of hands waving here. Hello, Julia. We're gonna tuck them, we're gonna hide those little arms and then fold it over and tuck. It's very cleverly designed so that there's a little slit to tuck that paper in so it does not require any adhesive. Kind of like the way a pizza box is made. If you ever look at a pizza box, delivery box, it has those same kinds of um, cuts here, which will lock in the pieces. Now, before we go further, we might wanna decorate the inside of the box and you'll have an assortment of pieces here. You have kind of a label. This would be cool also if you wanted to use it as a mailing label, but I'm gonna put it inside the top of my box so that I can write a message. If I put a gift card here, then I could write my message to the recipient on this piece. You could also put it on the bottom and have a love note on there that when they take the item out, there's a little surprise of a message. So I'll use uh, my green glue, my Tombow glue. Uh, you can also use, if you have um, tear and tape glue, we're gonna use that in a little bit tonight, uh, or glue dots, whatever adhesive you need, or glue stick can secure that. Actually, I put it on the bottom, even though I said I was gonna put it at the top. But I think it will be funny if someone um, opens it up. Let's say I've got a tea bag here, I can show you. So if the tea bag is here, once they take the tea bag out, then there'll be a little mystery message for them if I put it on the bottom. Right, okay. and especially I'm doing the pink box. Um, and yeah. I have the pink, um, let's see. So I have the pink uh, note on top of the pink yes. box. So that would be even more subtle inside. It's, yes, it's kind of camouflaged, exactly. You have the exactly. pink on top of the pink. So Julia's box on the outside will be the green when she closes it up, right? Excellent, yeah. that pretty, pretty mint green. Okay. So now we have this wrap, this long piece of paper. The one that in my case here has these green and white pattern on one side and polka dots on the other. Remember your package might be sprinkles or these stars. And uh, after I do this first box, we'll go ahead and do the birthday cake one Do just so you can review the, the steps. That's already pre-scored here so that it's measured really nicely to wrap around the box. So all we need to do then is adhere some adhesive here, and this is gonna create that belly band. Now I'm going to use uh, tear and tape, but you could again use, if you have a, a clear glue or even a glue stick, you just wanna be cautious to not over glue because we want this band to be able to slide on and off of the box. And if there's glue hanging over, it will get too tacky there. So a tip I love with the um, tear and tape if I can find the end here, is I put two strips. One I put at the end of the, 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 the strap, the strip that's gonna be closest to the box right down on the end. Then I put one on the end at the other side of the um, band. So I've got one strip here and one strip here. When I fold it over, then I've got kind of double stick. I've got a, a thin here and a thin here, but it's not squishing over onto the outside. So I'll peel those off. Remember when you're using tear and tape, there's just a little wax paper liner. Actually on our calendar project tonight, I've already adhered the tear and tape for you. So you'll get to have that experience. We're gonna just smooth that over and now it can slide. It should be um, pretty tight, but because uh, we don't want it to just fall off if you're handing it to someone, but we want it to be able to slide off for them to um, open up what's inside the box. Now for the decorating piece, we have lots of little extras, right? We have some twine, we have a circle, a uh, tag template, 
And then this is a fun, looks like a bread tie, right? And what this does is it kind of locks around the ribbon and um, will will hold without, um, you don't have to punch any hole. You're just gonna slide it in there and the ribbon because it's wider than the opening, it will kind of stay in place. Uh, the stamps that I'm going to use for this have, I have quite a few options. Um, the one that I made originally has good things come in small packages, happy birthday. This one with the little flowers and leaves, I think will make a uh, congrats, cheers to forever. This would be a nice one for a wedding or an anniversary. Uh, so I'm gonna put um, my photopolymer stamp right onto the clear block. And this is a stamp set I would love to gift to someone who would enjoy having it um, after I've finished using it for our class tonight. So if, if you are interested in receiving, um, having an entry into the little drawing or a raffle, we'll do a little surprise, then we'd love for you to comment um, here or when this is on the Facebook um, and YouTube channel. So at the end of the week or start of the week, next week, I'll take a look at comments and I can invite someone to uh, connect with me to pick up their, their set. Um, it has some nice all around greetings and for graduation, for baby, for birthday, for, uh, um, there's a nice one that says with love. I think I'll use that one on the little tag. So depending on what stamps you have in your goodie box this month, you might have something that's appropriate for one of these sizes, or you might hand write a little message or a monogram. I'm gonna put the with love here. So one I wrap, let's see, I'll put the cheers to forever. I'm gonna use some dimensionals. You can use dimensionals or a flat glue. You know that I love dimensionals because they pop up and what they do is create a little bit of a shadow. And uh, I think that adds some more interest to mo my projects. So I'm almost, almost all of my projects use a dimensional. And what that does is just lift it off of the project. Cheers to forever. Now I'm gonna use my twine and I'll wrap it around two times because it, it's a little bit long. Tie a bow. The reason I'm tying it this way is so that they can slide it off with the belly band. The whole thing can get can slide off like this without having to untie the bow. And here's this little bread tie. And that can flip slip in under the knot there. And it will, it will hold. It's easy to pull out when you want to, but it will stay in place because of that clever design. I have trouble with tying knots. I don't think I do it the mm -hmm. way other people do. So mm -hmm. can you show us once again uh, how you- Sure, how I did the bow? Sure, let me do it with this other one here. Um, let's, well, this one I can use. So when I'm tying a, a bow like this, uh, and my wrist, I've cut this long for us because it's kind of a thin twine and I wanted it to have a little more bulk when it's wrapped. So I'm gonna wrap it two times. And then when I tie my bow, I'm thinking about how I learned as a Girl Scout, um, you, could you could make a square knot if you don't wanna make a bow. And to do that, you would go left over right and pull it tightly and then right over left. So it's the opposite. And that makes a neat square knot, mm -hmm. which then you could tuck in your little um, bread tag and it would hold in place like that. Some people are more comfortable making knots rather than bows, and that's totally fine. If you're making a bow, um, I, I think about how I learned to tie my shoes and how I taught my boys to tie their shoes. So there's two, two methods that I like for tying. And one would be, oh, got some sticky on me here. Um, one is called the bunny ear method. And that's where you make two, two bunny ears and you cross them over. My, my ribbon is a little short. Let's do it this. I'm going to do it on something else. So I have a longer string. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So if I'm doing the, the bunny one, I'm going to first make my step of the knot. I'm going to make two bunny ear loops. Okay, it's hard to see it. There we go. 
And then I'm going to just cross those over the same way I started my knot. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. So now I've got that. That's a, a bow with the two bunny ears. So the ears the, are coming uh, out uh, sideways from the main. The, yeah. Uh -huh. It tends to work really well where it will lay nice and flat. When okay. you do it the way you tie your shoes, I do the left over right, pull it tightly there. And then I do one loop at a time. So I've made my one loop here. I'm sorry, it's hard to see. And then and then this one does the wrap around and goes through the hole. They say there's a bunny analogy for that one too. See, this one tends to be more sideways or up and okay. down. Got it. Yeah, so practice that. If you like the look of the spread out bow loops, practice that bunny ear loop and see how that works for you. Yeah, sometimes okay. it works for me and sometimes it doesn't. I haven't figured out what the difference is. I, I know, same thing. I've tied hundreds and hundreds of bows in my lifetime, but there isn't always a consistency to it. All right, so here I have a little leaf. I can add that to here too, maybe. Tuck it in with a little bit of glue. So depending on your packet, you have some different embellishments tonight for your, your box, but there's the yellow one and the pink one. Although remember you can do it opposite and because your box can be turned inside out. So before we go to our next card, I wanna show you the little cupcake birthday one. It's gonna be that same construction for the box. So I'm gonna score on all of the lines, the creases, crease on all of the score lines. This one has a fun coral inside too. It's, it looks a little bit red on screen, but it's more of an orangey coral. That's similar to the color of my shirt tonight, it's kind of camouflaged. So we've got these little arms. Our little friend has his arms waving. We're gonna hide those and pull the side down and lock it, okay? So remember that's just like the pizza box. It's gonna hold that in place. Do the same on the other side. Take the little arms, fold them in, cover them up. And then you've got a nice sturdy little box. This one, we can put the confetti inside. I'll put some glue on here. So this kit was a paper pumpkin kit um, a year or two ago. And it was designed so that you could make packaging to be ready for any occasion. So that's why that stamp set has so many fun designs. For the belly band, we're just going to fold on those crease lines and wrap it around. This time, I'll instead of using the tear and tape, I'll show you how I use the, the um, Tombow glue. I'm just going to make a thin thread along the out the um, edge of the inside and the edge of the other side. So I don't want the glue to smush over here. So I have to give a little bit of space. Better to be light touched with the glue when you're doing something like this, because you want to make sure it can slide off and off and on. Okay. And the embellishments for this one, let's see, we've got a little cupcake. We have some extra tag pieces. So I can spell out happy birthday on this little thin piece. Happy birthday. And what I did on the good things come in small packages is I just flagged the end of this banner to make it um, like a banner instead of a straight edge. So to do that, you can there's a you can just freehand and make a little triangle cut or you can actually cut in to through the middle make a little snip to in the middle and then from each end into the middle you make a little triangle cut and that way your your cut is in the middle so we've got a happy birthday how about uh let's see what my other words are special delivery that might be a fun one I think they designed the special delivery to be if you have a baby, that's your special delivery. But I think your little package for a happy birthday could be a special delivery too. There we are. Put this on here with my dimensionals. And 
There we are, special delivery. And then this time I can wrap my gray around two times, tie a bow. I love the little bread tie piece. I think it's very clever because you didn't have to thread it uh, and it can come on and off pretty simply. Yeah, so that time, Julia, my bow is going up and down. I'm gonna, um, because the ribbon is a little short when I double it, it's harder for me to do the bunny one, the bunny style, but I can kind of train a bow. After you tie a bow, you can wiggle it, wriggle it and wiggle it a little bit to train it to go in a different way sometimes, <laughs> but sometimes that string has a mind of its own and that's how it wants to be. This cute little cupcake we can add to the tag and then happy birthday, put that along. I'm gonna flag both ends on this, this design. So I'm gonna take a little slit in and then from both ends, make a little triangle cut. A little bit of glue, there we go, fun. So these are ready to fill now. You can um, put, like I said, a gift card, a tea bag, a little bit of money, a photo, a love note, all kinds of good greetings can fit in those boxes. All right, so next we're gonna work on the beautiful Orchid Oasis card. Let me just clean up my work area a little bit. I'm gonna trade out some Orchid Oasis. When you have little pieces like this, remember we've shared the tip before, have a little shoe box or a Tupperware container where you can toss little pieces like this into, um, this looks like just a tiny scrap, uh, which is what it is, but it can be uh, really handy when you're crafting and you want, you need just something small. So when you have leftover pieces from classes that we do, uh, just keep those in some kind of container so your stash will grow of bits and pieces. All righty. So for this next card, you will see inside the, the beautiful Orchid Oasis paper is some glimmer paper, really sparkly. This looks like um, Queen Elsa to me from Frozen. I love this card. And a lot of times we think of snowflakes just before Christmas and with the holidays. Um, but of course, here in upstate New York, we're going to have snow for a while. So I thought this would be a really nice uh, card for you to share as a thank you note to someone or a birthday or a thinking of you or just a day brightener for these uh, dark January and February days ahead. I scored the card for you so that we could make a little pocket. This is a trick I use, I do a lot with our with our card bases where just to modify the card very uh, minimally, but it has a big effect because then you can put something inside the pocket. So you'll, you'll fold on that score line and then I'm going to put a little adhesive just at the top and the bottom so that I have a pocket. Now, if you don't wanna put something in there, you can glue the whole thing down or you can cut off that flap, but it's in this case, it's serving a function as well as uh, the featured prettiness of it because it's a pocket you can put something in. Now this part here looks quite stark and plain. And what we're gonna do is brighten it with this beautiful um, glimmer paper. So it's cut to be the, the five and a half inches and then to overlap a little bit. So when you open it, there's quite a bit showing. We'll use our adhesive to secure that. You can line it up. Sometimes when I cut things, they're just a tiny bit off. So if that's the case, oh, what? let's see, Julia. You've got your snowflake and your white piece. Do you also have this piece too? Good, okay. Oops, I can't hear you now. I hadn't glued them down yet. I was still uh, experimenting to see how- Experimenting it, with um, the shape, exactly, yeah. yeah. So um, the uh, what I thought I would do for mine is have the white, I really wanted the white to be featured, so it's gonna be kind of off to the side here, um, but you can layer them up any way you like. It's very pretty um, with the glimmer, isn't it? The 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 snowflake does have two sides. One is a flat white. The other is a um, um, 
shiny kind of uh, opalescent look. And, and it's very pretty against the glimmer or against the opal or the orchid oasis. So you can decide. And if you want to add a greeting, that's why we I've left the circle here with the snowflake to the side. But you could, and that's similar to how I did it here. I just didn't put my snowflake there yet. Okay. But again, these are pieces you can play with. You could might you might want your card to orient um, portrait instead of landscape, and you can do that. Uh, if it's a card you want to stand, then portrait is the way to go uh, because otherwise it would flop down. Oh, that's okay too. But you can you as the designer you can make those choices. But let's go ahead. We'll adhere the snowflake. I'm going to put it up in the corner. Kind of, I'm going to put a little adhesive in the center and then just ever so slightly little tiny dots. Yeah, I tried another way of doing it. This is kind of fun. Uh -huh. Oh, that's very pretty. Yeah. It is so lovely on top of the glimmer paper. It really helps it shine. There, so I'm going to place that wherever you decide to put it on your card or layer it up. And then we'll do some stamping. This stamp set is from a kit that we that I'm featuring tomorrow. And it has this lovely kind of um, loopy greetings that says, hello, friend, a thousand good luck wishes and wishing you all the best. And the wishing you all the best fits very nicely in this circle. So I'm going to do that. And I think wishing you all the best in this kind of flurry, uh, loopy font is really appropriate with a breezy snowflake, all the windy snowflake days we've been having here. So wishing you all the best. It just, to me, in the cards, they're kind of like um, dandelion or other flowers where the petals would blow in the wind. In this case, we're having snowflakes blow in the wind. I'll show you those cards after I finish putting it together. Because glimmer paper, it has a, a different texture. Uh, the dimensionals don't hold on it very well. This the Our sticky back, um, double-sided, bumpy dimensionals that we use, they don't, um, they don't like to stick to this kind of glimmer paper. So I choose to use some of the Tombow glue because I want that to be a secure hold here. And then what I'll do is pop up that bottom piece with dimensionals. Now, if you didn't want to cover up your whole glimmer piece, remember you can layer it however you like so that more of that shimmer shows. All right, so got our dimensionals and that way I can just pop this up. I didn't want any way over at the edge because I want it to kind of hang over. I like the look of it um, hanging over from the onto the glimmer paper here. So you want to make sure you don't have adhesive at the, the edge. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Isn't that fun? It's it, on camera. It's kind of hard to catch all the glimmer, but hopefully you'll see. Um, it's very Queen Elsa from Frozen. <laughs> it's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> now I wanted to show you the cards that if you if you make this kit for our let's kit together tomorrow morning if you choose this kit um, it comes with this acetate box that you can gift your three cards it makes nine cards but three of them would fit into this acetate box so it's a great value you get nine cards the box the stamp set the block and the ink but I think these are lovely a thousand good luck wishes Wishing you all the best and hello, friend. So, and the envelopes are so pretty with the um, the envelope flap. So that's, they have some really pretty sparkly gems. So that's one of our choices for the Let's Kit Together tomorrow. Another choice that I was sharing with Julia earlier that I really love are some Panda Bear cards. I'll show you a sneak peek of these. They're just very happy cards. Great for Valentine's, but also just for year round love notes. This one says, hey there. And it comes in all different languages. So you can greet your pandas in um, French, German, Dutch, or English. <laughs> uh, and this one makes eight cards, four of each. And then one other sneak peek of tomorrow. This is the new kit called Rock Legend. It's so much fun. It says, you're a legend has these great star embellishments. And this one says, you rock, happy birthday. But you could leave the happy birthday off and just have it be you rock for any time. So this one again makes the eight cards, four of each. And I noticed the I, one sticker is in the shape of a guitar pick. Yes, isn't that clever? 
Yeah, so some sort of vellum pieces in here that are that translucent paper, sheer paper. There's a star shape with the vellum and then the guitar pick. Very clever details and lots of fun um, elements on those. So that's just three of the choices tomorrow. I have several different kits to choose from for our Let's Kit Together. And I look forward to seeing those of you who can attend with us. Now let's finish with our calendar card tonight. This is a card I call the double box fold flat card because it has two boxes that were paper engineering and it folds flat to fit right into an envelope to mail or to gift to someone. So these are the dimensions for my original card design, which I created um, for a swap with other fellow Stampin' Up! demonstrators. And I just love these beautiful bird papers. It's called Flight and Airy. And so there's that construction. And so I wanted to share that the you can modify and adjust the width and the length of this piece, the, the piece that the calendar is on based on what you want your design to be. So the other dimensions for the card base remain the same, but this top box piece, you can vary. So you'll see that the calendar is wider than my original base. It wouldn't have fit on there. So I lengthened, I actually didn't, I made it wide. I lengthened the width, I made it wider so that that calendar would fit across. Uh, but if you're interested in the dimensions that you can take a screenshot or this is something I can post as well. Uh, and it's very simple construction, but it's a wow because of that, that um, paper engineering. In your envelope, you have uh, the, the printed uh, Rolf, Waldo, um, Rolf Waldo Emerson quote, that I love, write it on your heart that every day is the best day of the year. I think that's a wonderful quote, uh, especially for a calendar card. You have the calendar and we can peel off December because we're already in January, friends. Can you believe it? And then you have some designer series paper pieces that we'll use to decorate. You also have an extra white piece. Um, that's if you wanted to have a different quote or do different stamping on this. Um, it's the same size as the piece I printed the quote for you, uh, just in case you want to change up and have a different sentiment for your card. The larger piece, which in your calendar has, or in your kit, I faced it up, I think, with the dots. On the back of that is more of the flowers. And I want to share with you an option. You can use this piece to decorate the flap of the envelope, which we often do. And it's a great way to give a sneak peek of what's inside your card, right? You can do that. Or what you can do is cut out, use it to, to cut out little pieces to embellish your calendar card. And mm -hmm. I chose to do that for the sample here. If you do the envelope, you'll get just a tiny bit. You might have a couple flowers to cut out, but... Um, so you're welcome to do that if you like, but I chose, instead I'm gonna show you another way you can embellish the envelope flap, and then you could, you'll could you have this paper, this larger piece to be able to cut and fussy cut some little flowers to add to your design. So, so let's start by um, putting together, well, I don't wanna forget about the envelope. So I'm gonna show you a way to decorate the flap with ink. And what I'm gonna do is isolate the flap by using some scrap paper here so that the ink won't get on the rest of the flap. And I'm gonna take a, a little flower stamp that's part of that all the best stamp set. And this green is a little bit different from the garden green. This is a, a um, clover, call me clover green. We're gonna, But just for an example, I'm gonna show you a garden green. And what I'm gonna do is stamp many times where I'm going off the edge of the card. I call this like a wallpaper technique because I want the pattern to go all the way around. Now I'm, I'm actually going off onto the glass mat tonight. The glass mat studio is a new product available to new demonstrators during January and February and to active demonstrators and um, it's a new tool. I wasn't familiar with this before, but there are so many cool things that the Glass Mat Studio allows me to do. And one is just I can easily clean up any inky mess. So right here where I've got some ink on there, I can take my cloth 
and just wipe that away. So usually in the past, I've always had um, a lot of grid paper. And if you come to the library, you, we have a grid paper that's like your placemat. Um, but if you have something like a glass mat, it's tempered glass. It's um, it's very flat and sturdy and uh, it wipes clean very simply. So, But that's one way you can embellish your envelope flap if you prefer to use your paper for the card. I'll set that aside and I'll move my ink away so that it doesn't get onto my project. I tend to kind of spread it around, right? So this is, again, easy construction, but kind of a wow uh, because it um, has this fun variation to a standard card. I'm starting with a piece of cardstock that measures four and a quarter by 10 and a half inches. So I cut off just a half inch from the, from the, one side. Now I already have some tape here for you and you're going to simply fold on those score lines. So we just fold and crease, fold and crease, and we're going to make a little box. So that's why I call this the double box fold flat card. Now, before I remove the backing to the tape, let's take a look and see how this is going to work. People make these sometimes to hold candy or toothpaste or Oh, I don't know. What else would you put in here in someone's stocking at Christmas or a Valentine tree? You could put a little um, hostess um, ho ho in there. <laughs> um, you know, depending on the size of your box, you can use it as a gift holder. In this case, obviously, the design is to keep it open there and fold it. When my husband first saw it, he's like, Oh, what do you put inside there? And I thought, Well, that's really clever to think about because you could use it as a, an enclosure for things or storage, um, but it's actually by design made so it can fold flat. Okay. So now we're ready to peel off this adhesive strip. And the trick now is when we line it up, you're gonna fold on the crease, the second crease in, and then fold that onto the card. So, that creates the box in just the right space. So we we remove that liner and fold it on the second line back. And when that goes pushes down, it will be in just the right place to be a flat stand up card. Okay. But That's I forgot cool. something important. Yeah, I forgot cool. something. You just fold it flat like that, and it ends up lined up. Isn't it clever? But I did forget something important. And so if you're if you're watching along and hopefully you you can um <laughs> you can fit yours in. I really the best idea is to put the designer series paper on first okay. because this flap is going to over. So I apologize. Sometimes I do that, I get it step ahead. Before you secure the green piece, you want to put on your designer series paper. So I'm just gonna quick pretend I didn't do that. I'm gonna put some glue on here. And I'm going to get that in place. Now, all I have to do is slide it in ever so bit, a little bit, and it will make that nice frame around here. But let me quick show you on another one so that um, I'm going to teach it better this time. Okay. So you're, you're going to fold on the score lines. And then now you can see this is the part that's going to go inside here. So we want to put the paper here in this location. And I'll do that quickly for us. And that way now when I fold over this, oh, got a little too much glue there, my towel. Now when I secure this in place, it will cover that properly. So it gives me another chance to show you where you're gonna fold it. So the second fold, that's where we, we're gonna lift that over. I wish I had better words to describe it, but um, what we're going for is that that box shape. So we wanna, it's very clever how you just fold it flat, then you know that it's in the right position. So I'm gonna remove the liner and fold that so that it's flat. So when you're looking at it, there's a score line here and then you push down flat. Okay, there we are. So next we're going to build the, the um, front box. 
the top box. And this measures five and a half by three inches. It's scored at one half and one and three quarter inch. And this is the piece, like I suggested to you, that you could modify depending on what you want this feature focal point to be. You could make it wider, you can make it more narrow. That's up to you. Uh, before we put it on, we need to put our designer series paper in place. And that is so that um, it's gonna be behind the calendar here. So let's, before we um, add this, we're gonna put the designer series paper right on the front of the first box. And you can push it flat to, to push it down. Remember, that's the whole beauty of this card is it folds flat. Okay. Now we'll be ready to put this on top because the paper will just be the backdrop now. Hold on these score lines so that your um, tear and tape is revealed. You also have a, oh, I didn't put a tear and tape on this one. Did I do? Oh, it looks like I forgot. Um, you can also have tear and tape at the bottom, but we can use regular glue. So we'll do that after. We're going to take the, um, the piece folding on that second score line. And before you take the tear and tape off, just take a look at where I position it so you know where you're going to put it before we peel it off. It's going to line up right at the top of the card. The, the fold will be right against the top of the paper. So now I can peel off the tear and tape and have it folded on that second line, put it right up to the top and just push that so that the tape will adhere. And now you'll see how it's got the double box. So it's just flappy now, we have to secure this part. You can use a piece of tear and tape across. Since I forgot to do that for you, I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue where I would have put the tear and tape because you don't need a lot. And then you wanna make sure you're folding flat when you push this down. If you have questions, please let me know. You can stop by the library and we can meet and I can show you in person. But it's a very easy construction. I promise after you've done it a couple times, you get a real feel for it. Um, the tear and tape is helpful because it's uh, a clean adhesive. It's not gonna spread out. Um, and so now we have the double box. Maybe you can show that on the other one that you started, um, just how the second box goes on. Sure. Okay. So the second box, um, we have two score lines mm -hmm. and it's going to go, it, it's going to line up at the very top here. The second score line is going to go right up against the, t the line at the top of the card. Okay, so that the tear and tape sticks to the front of the flower. It'll be, yes, it'll be right around in here. So oh, you want to. Okay, I see. Your, yeah, see the tape is, it's going to be kind of here. Oh, okay. uh, right, right. That's the tear and tape piece right uh, there. Okay. Okay. So you remove the liner and then right against the top of the card is where you're lining up that second score line. Uh -huh. And you push down. Now, to do the bottom part here, let me quickly put on my designer series paper. There we go. So the bottom part, now that you have the top part secured that had the tear and tape, we're gonna fold everything flat again, and then this will push down here. So we've got to put a little adhesive underneath to make it stick. You don't need a lot. I'm just going to make a strip as if it were a piece of tear and tape there. Okay, so you make sure the bottom part is folded up before you fold that top flap. Down. Yes, this all has to be flat. All of those scores okay. have to be. So you're going to push down and then fold that down and it will all be flat. So okay. it looks kind of funny when it's closed. You know, you, you have yeah. this extra green part showing and it's not really centered very well, but once it pops open, then everything falls into place. Okay, thank you. All right. 
You're welcome. So next we're gonna embellish the front and we'll add our calendar piece. And so you can just put adhesive. You don't need to put it on the whole thing if you don't want to, or you can use tear and tape or another kind of glue. And we'll secure that. Just kind of, I put my finger into the inside to help kind of push to make sure the glue adheres well. And I've got my greeting. Remember, you have options. You can make your own sentiment if you'd like, um, or add or embellish this any any number of ways. I'd love to see the the way you change it up. Uh, and you might choose to use your calendar for a different project. That's okay with me too. You could make this just a card and use your calendar for a different. There's many many ways to display these little calendars. Um, so if you have a different idea, I'd love to have you share that. Now, you know that I like to fussy cut. I love to take images from the from a designer series paper to coordinate. And so I'm gonna cut some of these little flowers while we're chatting tonight with using my paper snips. And when I use my paper snips, I, I move the paper. My scissors are pretty much staying stationary, but the paper is what's moving around. And we'll just cut out a number of these little ones. Or if you have buttons or gems or sequins or ribbons that you might want to add, you could do that. These are tiny flowers for fussy cutting. The birds that I showed you on my other project were a little easier because I didn't need to piece so many of them. They were already, um, it was, this is one, piece from the designer series paper. So I just cut out, fussy cut that one piece. But I, I think it's fun, uh, just like how we fussy cut fabric to, to get the, the choice bits from a piece of fabric, we can do that with paper too. And then you'll see on my sample that I, some of them I bumped up with the dimensionals to give some depth and some I glued flat to the card. But I just liked how that added to the um, to the sentiment and and coordinated with the with the project. This is a fun project too to use lots of different designer series paper. For example, in this bird one, I used uh, three different patterns: the the pe pecan pie um, sort of fence looking or nest looking one, and some watercolor blue and the floral. So you can really mix and match. Uh, any papers that you have to, to showcase the variety of papers. All right, I'm gonna cut just a few more. And if you have questions, you can chime in or remember we love to answer your questions. If you're catching the replay, you, that you can still reach out to Julia or to myself and we'd love to hear from you. I especially love to hear uh, if there's something you'd like to learn that we could share uh, learning together as part of our library class. So if you see something on Pinterest or receive a special card that's handmade, or maybe you see a card in the store that you want to recreate, uh, that's a fun challenge to do. Take a picture <laughs> or purchase the card. And if you want to, there's a when question. they're handmade. Yeah. yeah. There's a question from Nancy Crafts. Could you show where the calendar is glued free or floral? Uh, let me see. You sort of did that when you went back through what I asked, but um, yeah. So that's okay. So the some places the calendar, and some places it's not. Uh, you mean where it's glued? Yeah. So for instance, I have mine so that I have part of it is done. Yes, the top part is done, and I intended to have a piece of. Um, tear and tape under there. And it, I just didn't, I forgot to put it on there, but like, so instead I'm just putting some glue under here. Let me peel it off again. I can show you. So it'll tear a little bit, but it's okay. Basically putting this piece on the bottom before you put the green part over it. Right, right. You want to be able to, to have the paper at the bottom. And then uh -huh. when it's pushed down flat, then it's going to, everything will line up. If you hold that flat, and push this down like that. Oops. Yes. So you don't have to, it's already perfectly scored. So it will line up um, okay. against that. If you, if you put your paper across the top. And then uh, when you and, unfold it, it 
does uh, then it will be secured yeah yeah so so this part here if you have tear and tape you can put a strip of tear and tape there otherwise just have a, a thin strip of glue because you don't want too much glue to have it leak leak around um i hope that that's helpful nancy it you i had intended to already have the tape on both sides for you um but it's just you can use whatever adhesive you have to to add that to it okay and then the calendar will be adhered on top of, of that just with with glue or with tear and tape uh it doesn't have a cardboard backing so you're actually gluing december right onto the to the green directly i hope that's helpful it's a it's a really fun um, pro project gift to receive when they open it and that, that it pops up and then can be positioned on a desk or a, 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 a mantelpiece or wherever. So when you're ready to add your little um, floral pieces, what I did was I glued a few of them directly to the uh, white sentiment and then others I popped up with a dimensional. so that there'd be a little bit, but I think it'd be lovely if you had buttons or gems or any kind of um, embellishments you could add there. Let me show you back the original one here. It has, I cut out some more of the little yellow and orange and flowers there. And so this is called the double box fold flat card. And I hope that you like it. I hope it's something you'll either keep and enjoy for your own um, pleasure throughout the year or that you'll give it to someone special so they can think of you as they look at the calendar every month. Let me bring back in our pick, our um, projects from tonight and I'm going to show you one more. Whoops, those aren't for tonight, but they're fun to show you. Here's all the best and let's see where's our little boxes. Here they are. Okay. There we are. And I did want to show you too, you know how much I enjoy designer series paper. Oh, I'm glad Elizabeth, that, I'm glad Lisa that you like the calendar. I do too. I think it's a, it's a really a fun um, paper engineering trick to, to share. So if you like uh, designer series paper, like I do, I'm my friend, Cindy and I, Cindy lives in Hawaii. We are partnering to offer a paper share where you get a sampler of all these incredible new papers that are available um, this spring with Stampin' Up. Some of the guitar paper that matches that new kit, uh, some lovely lavender paper, some that's called Kidding Around that has these beautiful children images in it. And uh, so there's, there's such an assortment. They are of course, double-sided papers. Some are foiled papers. They are they're just spectacular with some shine. So if you love paper and love to collect new paper, um, reach out to me. I'm offering a paper share as part of a class that Cindy and I are teaching. One of the projects we'll be making is this little tea holder. And um, I'll show you, this opens up kind of like a matchbook construction and it has some tea bags inside. And that uses that happy bee paper. So I do love to make 3D items, fun favors and things like that with paper engineering. So if that's something you like to learn about, let me know because it is fun to have at least one of our projects each month be something where you're learning some different kind of construction. I look forward to our gathering each month. Thank you, Julia, uh, for making this possible, this partnership with the Baldwinsville Public Library. And I invite you, uh, Julia and I were sharing that there are some past kits uh, that we have. And so that'll be getting organized shortly for you to be able to go back and view um, recordings from the last uh, almost three years and uh, take a look at and if there's some back editions that you wanted to experiment with the supplies. Um, I also want to remind you about our class tomorrow morning at the library, Friday in person, uh, it's January 12th, 10 a.m., um, where we'll be working with kits. Let's kit together. And there's lots of great choices. So Thanks, everybody. I wish you a very happy new year and uh, write it on your heart that every day is the best day of the year. Thanks, Julia. Yay. Thank mm -hmm. you. Bye, everyone. Bye.